the channel, we've got Retro Mania with some Chilla toys to unbox as we've got Al Snow, Jay White, and Nick Aldis. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Chella Toys unboxing and review. And today on the channel, we've got the latest and greatest in Al Snow, and we got some older ones in Jay White and Nick Aldis. But remember, for all your wrestling figure needs, be it AEW, Jazzwares, WWE, Mattel, make sure you're hitting up Ringside Collectibles. Use discount code Kyle. Save yourself 10%. And today, we're going to unbox some of these cellas, and I guess are they officially still cellas, or are they wrestling trader? I know cella has been bought, or the assets have been bought by wrestling trader, so I guess they're technically wrestling trader, but they're under the cella umbrella at the time. It gets confusing, but we'll see what all the fuss is about here. And of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging, we're going to talk about it, we're going to unbox it, we're going to talk about it, we're going to see where it goes from there. And I guess let's start with the old latest and greatest right here. Let's start with Al Snow. He is a wrestling, what's it say here? Wrestling Trader exclusive. So there you go. Uh, wrestling Trader is a shop, I believe, based out of the UK. And I did get this picked up uh, for me via Scott McGowan, good brother, good friend of the channel, Scott McGowan. He helped me out. He picked this up with a few other things over there in the UK and sent it over my way. So thanks, Scott, for helping me get this figure. Uh, but Al Snow, one of the uh, stalwarts of uh, the Attitude Era in a lot of ways, an ECW guy, WWE, WWF, uh, quite the journeyman in and of course, current owner of Ohio Valley Wrestling for those keeping track at home. But very, very cool looking figure here. The packaging is absolutely fabulous on this. There's some people that would argue the whole presentation in the package is actually better than the figure outside of the package. Uh, they might be right. It really is 50-50 on these. I think there's people that buy these to open. There's a lot of people that buy these to keep on card. Uh, I'm going to open them up. I would love to have all these on card, but we've talked about Cella Toys, Wrestling Trader now, Retro Mania. There's so many retro figures. Uh, it's to the point where there's just too many to keep all these on card for my collection. Uh, so they're all going to be opened up for me. So let's take a look at old Al Snow in the package here. Very Hasbro style, of course. The little uh, glamour shots down here just ring back to the old Hasbro days. You got Al Snow there. Even got head in there, which is really cool. Then you got Al Snow, a nice picture of him. I love the black carding on this one as well. And then on the back, you get a very Hasbro-esque backing back here. We're going to read the back, see what's going on. We're going to list through the guys here as well. Let's see what it says here about old Al Snow. Uh, collect them all. Giant Haystacks. We unboxed him on the channel already. Uh, Big Daddy. Hopefully I get that fairly soon. Greg the Hammer Valentine going to be a very controversial one. I do have that pre-ordered when that comes. Tanga Loa I passed on. Gangrel I have not bought yet. Luna Vachon I have not bought yet. Adam Bomb we unboxed on the channel. Big Stevie Cool and Hollywood Nova hopefully coming sooner than later. I did pre-order those guys. Uh, it does say Al Snow, six foot one, two hundred and thirty-five pounds from Lima, Ohio. Absolutely middle of the road this year. Not the most beautiful place, Lima, Ohio. Al Snow rose to prominence during the Attitude Era as part of the famed Job Squad, along with his sidekick Head. What does everybody want? I could go for a pizza right now. I don't know about you guys. What do you guys want? Uh, we do got one wrestling point on the back. I haven't been saving those. Maybe I should for a rainy day. Who knows? But. As much as I hate to do it, I'm going to unbox him. I'm going to pull Al Snow out of the package. Oh, it hurts my heart a little bit, but it must be done for science, as we always say. And there it is, Al Snow. See you later. Goodbye. Let's start with his accessory first. We've got head. It's got the old help me on it. Very interesting. It looks more, more mannequin than the actual mannequin looked. I don't know if that makes sense. This almost looks like an extra head for somebody, but... Uh, it doesn't look as mannequin-y as the mannequin looked in the head days. And I'm not talking about the styrofoam head days, talking about the regular head days. But it does have help me over there. It does have hair, all that kind of stuff. No way for him to grip it or hold this. I think that is a bit of a miss. Yeah, that, that is a big miss here. I think he should have been able to hold this. I don't know if he can kind of headlock it. I guess that's the best you're going to do. You can kind of give it a little headlock there. But I would like to see it to be able to be plugged in or held. That would have been nice. But uh, now we break down the Al Snow figure here. He also has helped me on the forehead. Al Snow is missing a neck, though. That's one of the first jarring things. 
It's interesting, as we do know the Hasbro, the retro style figures, uh, they're just uh, more artistic than actual figures like a Mattel figure, an Elite or an Ultimate. Those are supposed to really represent the character. These are supposed to represent the character, but in a bit more cartoony way. So you got to kind of look at it through those lenses. But this is an interesting with Al Snow, as he does have no neck at all. That is a little strange. Would have liked to seen a little neck with this one. He also has an interesting middle section torso, and then he kind of weighs out at the hips and then the legs. Kind of makes him look a little boxy, a little bit squatty uh, in action figure form. He does got the arm curled here like a young Mr. Perfect Scott Steiner, of course, the old Hasbro days, so I don't mind that at all. I love the fist inclusion here. I love being able to put a headlock, the snow plow, do all those finisher moves like that. Very cool. Love the articulation, and we'll walk through the articulation in a second. We do got Job Squad, one, two, three for life on the front. Pin me, pay me on the back. Of course, the Job Squad shirt. Job Squad on the tights, black knee pads. Uh, white boots here. Articulation, we're going to go all the way around with the arms. Both arms going to go all the way around. Uh, the head, a little bit of side to side, but really non-existent. You do get waist articulation, and that's where the articulation segment ends. Not a ton of articulation on these. Interesting hair on Al, Al Snow as well, as you got kind of that blonde hair, and he did have that for a uh, time, but that up top spot, it's almost like a mohawk going on, or at least got cornrows or something. That does look a little strange to me. Uh, Al Snow, I think it looks like him enough as far as these kind of figures go in the face. Got the wide open mouth, got the goatee going on. Uh, definitely interesting. And of course, we do know from these cello ones, they're not like the Hasbros, or not like the Mattels. We do not get action features in these figures. These are more of like a, a chess piece or a statue, things like that. There is no, uh, of, no fun moves you can do with them. You gotta use your imagination like the old days, I guess. So there it is. There's Al Snow. I'm going to say it's okay. It's okay for what it is. The hard part of these figures is obviously a lot smaller production runs than the Mattels of the world. So it makes these guys a little bit more pricey than we really want them to be. That's the hard thing. If this is $10 cheaper, it would feel like that much more better value to me. But still cool. Uh, I was all in on these, but now they've announced so many, I think I'm going to have to pick and choose going forward. But some of the ones I pick and choose back in the day was some of these ones. As we segue over to Nick Aldis here, I believe he was the first Chella figure and then what really really got me out of the completionist games we've talked before is so many variants of this uh, figure here i said well, i'm one and done and i'm good and that's what i got here very cool black packaging once again very similar to al snow a lot of similarities to that al snow packaging it does display very very well on card uh, nick aldis an interesting one here in the package and we'll see where nick aldis goes in 2023 will it be AEW? will it be wwe will it be back to uh, impact pro wrestling will it be retirement who who knows at this point on the back, we've got that going on. Let's read the back, see what it says about Nick Aldis. Height six foot four, two hundred and forty-two pounds from Kings Lynn, England. I've never heard of Kings Lynn, England, but I bet you old buddy of the channel, Scott McGowan, he could tell me how the weather is in Kings Lynn, England right now. Uh, Nick Aldis is the current NWA World Heavyweight Champion, not anymore, and has also had titles in, in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Noah, and TNA. And then it does promote Series 1, uh, exclusive Mind and Meanie 2-pack with Josh Chernoff, Blue Meanie. Series 2 coming in mid-2021, we'll never know, we'll never know. Uh, so very interesting uh, figure here. So this is a real interesting. This was the first one, of course, from Chella at the time. Finally pulling it off the card, and I opened it rookie style. Rookie style, uh, brand new. I'm new to opening figures. See you later, as you can tell here. And the rookie style continues. See you later. Goodbye. I'm going to cut it open right there at the top a little bit. Help me out a little bit. I need all the help I can get, it, apparently, at this point. See you later. Goodbye. And we got Nick Aldis out of the package. Boy, oh boy, they've come a long way from the first to the latest and greatest. Uh, I was a little down on Al Snow, uh, but Al Snow is a way better figure than Nick Aldis here. I will say that uh, right off the bat here. But we will do the articulation first. Arms go around, head side to side, all kinds of movement on the head. You do get no waist, no waist on this one and no legs on this one. So really limited in the articulation department. And this is an interesting one because at first glance, he kind of looks like a little person is what he looks like here. And I love little people. I love big people, but little people, they got a special place in my heart. Uh, and he looks like he's ready to go one-on-one -on -one with our boy Swoggle, something like that. Is Boy, he does have a giant, giant head here compared to the body. Very interesting pink flesh tone color to him as well. Very, very interesting. But he didn't come to fight. He's got two fists after all. He's got the black elbow pads, got the black knee pads, got a black belt, red 
boots with white lettering and then of course the red tights on the back he is the dealer some might say he's the ace of spades but lemmy's got that held up uh he does got very motorhead-esque uh ace of spades going on here though you would uh, maybe be confused he's a motorhead fan but i don't i don't believe so but boy this nick aldis they've come a long way at cella uh just going between these two that is for sure so I don't know. I, now that I, I kind of had some regrets, I didn't get all those Nick Aldises. I said, man, I could have been a completionist. But after kind of dealing with this one, maybe not as many regrets as I thought I was going to have. So there you go. There's Nick Aldis right there. And now we turn our attention to the final piece of the puzzle. We turn our attention to Switchblade Jay White, uh, a wrestler I've never quite come to understand. And I got to be honest, I've barely watched any of his New Japan stuff. I've seen a few matches on Access TV and a few things over the years. Of course, I did see him in Impact Pro Wrestling. I did see him in AEW. I don't know. What is all the fuss about? Maybe I have to dive in a little bit more. Uh, we'll see. But Jay White's another interesting one. Very popular in the internet community as we do know now this one was a ringside collectibles exclusive use discount code kyle save yourself 10 percent. and i believe they still have this for sale on ringside collectibles i don't know the uh, cyber monday sale may have wiped him out but i think they still had some or at least some damaged package ones so if you're looking for this you might still be able to pick this up at old ringside collectibles definitely different packaging than we saw with the other ones as though it was black where we got the orange here you got the new japan logo got a big glamour shot you got the ringside exclusive and then, of course, you got the bubble going on. On the back, we got War and Peace as far as blurbage. I love a good blurb as much as the next guy, but this one's even a little long for me. You got the Bullet Club going on. You got the tail of the tape down here, but then a big, big blurb. I'll try to uh, freeze frame that, and you can pause the video if you really want to read all that about uh, Jay White. But it does say ring name Jay White, nickname Switchblade and King Switch. Unit, the Bullet Club, build weight 220 pounds. Place of birth, Auckland, New Zealand. Absolutely fabulous this time of year. Love New Zealand. Shout out to all you New Zealanders. Uh, old Bushwhacker Luke coming to town here in a week or so. I think next weekend, actually, if I remember correctly. And I did see him earlier this year. So uh, New Zealand feeling all the love out there. Finishing moves, the old Blade Runner swinging reverse STO. And the Kiwi Crusher outside leg hook fisherman driver. So there it is right there. Switchblade Jay White. Let's get him out of the package. See what's going on. He just kind of fell right off the bubble there. Look at that. See you later. Uh, that's not bad though. I like it when they fall off the bubble a little bit with a little bit of ease there. Keeps that backing nice and all that kind of stuff. Bam. See you later off the screen. Let's see what old Jay White is up to. I believe there is another version of this that was sold maybe somewhere else. I think he had red pants on. Uh, I did prefer the black pants version here. Uh, it's funny as boy, they've really came a long way in between these guys here. Is the all this is definitely the worst quality wise to me. Uh, but this one does look a little bit better here. And we get a little bit more articulation than we got. So we can see a little progression here. But the head does move. The arms do go around. Both arms go around. You do get waist movement. So you get that waist that is so crucial to these retro style figures. I like the posability on this one. I like the bend at the arm. Uh, kind of the fist going on there. And then he's got the old hook em horns going on uh, over here as well. So that's interesting. I think that's a switchblade hand gesture that he throws up. And then you got a lot of tally marks all over his black pants. Very easy decor here, the black and the white. Not a lot going on there. It does look enough like Switchblade J. White. Uh, either that or Brody King. If somebody gave you this head, they might say, oh, that's Brody King from AEW. Uh, it does have Switchblade on the side of the boots. I almost missed that. Uh, but this one looks good. I like the skin tone color. It's just a little bit better. It's actually the best skin tone color of the three right here. Uh, and I would honestly say the Switchblade is probably the best of the three. If I had to rank them, uh, it would go Switchblade, Al Snow, and Nick Aldis. Obviously, Al Snow, the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, but Al Snow is a little bit smaller than he needs to be here. He looks a little small compared to Switchblade uh, Jay White. This doesn't even look like they're in the same kind of universe of wrestling figures. Uh, especially when you look at the head sculpts. you got giant head sculpts and a very small head sculpt. So... They're really all over the place, and we did see that a little bit with the Hasbros, uh, but I think uh, Chella needs to hone in on a size and stick with it. I think that would make a lot of people, myself included, happy. So this truly is, ended up at the end, being a bit of a mixed bag between these three figures. There's uh, a little bit of good, some bad. It's just truly a mixed bag is what this is here. Is what this is here. This aren't for everybody, that is for sure. This is for the hardcore fan base. And it's going to be really interesting in 2023. Uh, we've been talking about it a lot on our weekly purchases, toy news videos of the week. Where this wrestling trader, Chella, Zombie Sailor, Mattel, uh, Rush Collectibles, Hastel Toys, 
where all this goes in 2023 is I don't think there's enough demand to support all the companies. I think somebody will fall by the wayside. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening. So if you're a retro fan, 2023 is going to be a teetering year uh, in the collecting base there. Will they continue on as we knew We Want Retros was the slogan for so long? It has dampered down, died down quite a bit. 2023 is going to be a crucial time in the retro business. But what say you guys out there in YouTube land? What are your thoughts on this three? Are they for you? Easy passes? Do you have any of these? Are you all in on retros? Are you all out on retros? Let me know your thoughts on the retro figure phenomenon that we're currently living in uh, in 2022, 2023, depending when you're watching this. Don't forget to like this video. You made it this far. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. As you guys know, we got videos every single day and then some even more content on the Patreon channel. Link in the description below. Good early access to videos like this. Bonus content, exclusive content, Q&A, giveaways, you name it. And best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support the channel at ProSNTs.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget to hit me up on social media and follow along. Sir Paul 64 over there on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for a little Wrestle Trainer Cella unboxing, I am Kyle, and I'll see you guys all real soon.